All right, so here's the video for the unit three practice test. So starting with question or concept A, question one, I can recognize and construct geometric sequences. So number one says write out four terms of the geometric sequence with a first term of six and a common ratio of negative two. So we know that geometric means that it is a pattern of multiplying or dividing. Since our common ratio is uh, negative two, it's gonna be a pattern of multiplying. Well, it's always a pattern of multiplying, I guess I should say, but since it's a, um, a two, we don't have to think about dividing. So our first term is six. So to get the next term, we're just going to multiply that by negative 2. Well, 6 times negative 2 is going to be negative 12. To get my next term, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. So negative 12 times negative 2 is positive 24. And then again, to get my fourth term, we're going to multiply by negative 2. So 24 times negative 2 is going to give me negative 48. So there's the first four terms of a geometric sequence. All right, number two, it says determine whether each of the following sequences is geometric. If so, write the explicit formula. So we're looking for a pattern of multiplying or dividing. So for the first one, it looks like we are um, adding five, adding five, adding five. So the pattern is addition. It's not geometric. This is actually an arithmetic sequence. So um, we're not going to write the explicit formula because we're only going to write it if it's geometric. Although we can write it um, since we do know how to write formulas for ar arithmetic sequences. All right, looking at B. So it looks like to go from 5 to 10, the pattern would be times 2. But that may, we have to make sure that works for all of them. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. 40 times 2 is 80. So yes, this is geometric where the common ratio is two. So that means my explicit formula is gonna be GN. Remember, it's the first term, which is five, times the common ratio, which is two. And then it's gonna to be to the N minus one power. All right, looking at C. So the pattern here looks to be divide by two. And that pattern works for the whole way. So the pattern throughout the whole thing is divided by 2, which means it is geometric. This is a decreasing geometric sequence. Um, and then to write the explicit formula, again, it's going to be gn equals the first term, which is 600. Remember when it's a pattern of divide by 2, that means the common ratio is going to be 1 half. Dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So it's going to be 1 half to the n minus 1 power. All right, so now question 3 says, uh, determine the ninth term in the sequence defined by gn equals 3 times 4 to the n minus 1 power. So we're trying to find the ninth term. So we're going to plug in 9 for n. So it's going to be 3 times 4 to the 9 minus 1 power. So we can simplify this to put it in our calculator, 3 times 4 to the 8th power, since 9 minus 1 is 8. So 3 times 4 to the 8th power. That's going to be 196,608. All right, question number four says, which represents a geometric sequence? So remember, a geometric sequence is one that either it's going to increase or decrease very fast. So it's not going to increase. So these ones don't increase and then decrease. It's either going to increase or decrease, or if it's an, uh, the common ratio is negative, that's one that kind of jumps around. This is um, a, uh, an arithmetic sequence because it increases by a constant amount. This pattern, it looks like it decreases really fast and kind of levels out. So this is going to be graph C represents a geometric sequence, because remember the shape of this graph is exponential. And we know that geometric sequences have exponential graphs. All right, so now moving on to concept B, which is I can identify characteristics of exponential functions. This says to sketch an increasing exponential function with a horizontal asymptote of positive y equals 1. So remember, horizontal asymptote is a line that a graph gets really close to but never crosses. So if we want it to be increasing, it needs to go up, but then we're going to level out at 1. So that might look something like this. This would be an increasing function because it's going up, and it has a horizontal asymptote of 1, so it flattens out at 1. 
Right, question number two, we're identifying various characteristics of this particular exponential function. So first one is asymptote. It's where it's leveling out. So it's leveling out at negative two, but remember we should write asymptote as a y equals negative two since it's a horizontal line. So for domain, we want to look left and right, how far left and how far right our graph goes. So this graph we know is going infinitely to the left because this is going up, but also to the left direction. So the domain goes from negative infinity and we know it's going to go to infinity to the right. So negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range, we look down and up. So the lowest my graph goes is going to be negative 2. So remember, whatever number is in your asymptote is going to be in your range. And then the highest your graph goes, it's, since it's going up, it's going to go to infinity. Now we're going to look at the x-intercept, where it crosses the x-axis. So it looks to be right here. So if we have to estimate, we're going to estimate. So that looks to be negative 0.5 so, or negative 0 0.5 comma 0. Make sure you write your x-intercept as a point. And then for your y-intercept, where, where it crosses the y-axis, which is right here. So that's me 0 comma negative 1. Last question asks, um, is this increasing or decreasing? So going from left to right, it's going down. So that's a decreasing function, which we would also call um, an exponential decay. All right, so now let's move on to part two. So concept C is I can graph exponential functions. So number one says Julia wants to graph f of x equals two to the x using the table. Find, correct, and explain the mistakes Julia made. So let's look and see what Julia did here. So uh, she plugged in negative one and she got negative two. Well, let's just see if that's correct. Two to the negative one power should be 0 0.5. So hold on, we as well correct it right here. So it should be 0 0.5. So now let's plug in zero and see if this is correct. So two to the zero power. is One, so this should be one. So that's incorrect. Now we're gonna plug in uh, two to the first power. That's two. So that's wrong. Now we're going to plug in 2 to the second power. That should be 4. We should recognize that this is kind of a pattern of multiplying by 2. And this should be 8. So if we look and see what she did, she seems to have a pattern of addition, right? She added 2, added 2, added 2, added 2. So I think what she did was instead of raising it to the second power or raising it to the power, she just multiplied two times the, the x value. So Julia used multiplication to get the y values. Instead of an exponent. So she basically said, oh, to get two, she did two times one. For this to get four, she did two times two. To get six, she said two times three. And what she should have been doing is she should have been doing two to the first power, two to the second power, and two to the third power. So she was using the x values as a multiplication instead of an exponent. All right, so this problem actually has this graph um, a function. So it gives us some x values to plug in. So we're going to plug in 3 to the negative 2 minus 1. So 3 to the negative 2 minus 1. That's going to be uh, negative 0 0.89. Now we're going to plug in 1. So 3 to the negative 1 minus 1. That's negative 0 0.67. Now we're going to plug in 0. That's 0. We're going to plug in 1. So 3 to the first power minus 1. Well, 3 to the first is 3 minus 1. That's going to be 2. These ones I think we can kind of do some mental math. 3 squared minus 1. So 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. And lastly, 3 to the third power minus 1. 3 to the third power, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, and 27 minus 1 is 26.
Okay, so now we have our points. So the first point we're going to graph is negative 2, negative 0 0.89. So negative 2, negative 0 0.89 is going to be close to negative 1, maybe right there. Next point we're going to plug in is negative 1, negative 0.67, which is about right here. Then we're going to plug in 0, 0, which is at the origin, 1, 2. Then we're going to plug in 2, 8. And then this last point, 326, is going to be off the graph, but it looks like we have enough to kind of get a sketch of our function. We know this is an exponential function, so it's going to be something like this. Okay, notice that whatever number is here is your horizontal asymptote at negative 1. All right, this, pro, uh, this concept says I can use exponential functions to model growth and decay. So number one says Susie deposits $5,000 into a savings account with an interest rate of 1.5%. She has two options, simple interest or compound interest. So part A says how much money will be in her account after five years if she chooses simple interest. So remember to find simple interest. The formula is AT. It's the principal amount or the initial amount, which is 5000 plus the initial amount, 5,000, times the interest rate. So remember, we do need to convert this to a decimal, so that's 0 0.015 times time. So I'm just going to write the equation first. So we can simplify this a little further by doing the 5,000 times the interest rate. The 1.5% of 5,000 is 75. So our equation is AT equals 5,000 plus 75t. But if we want to know how much is in our account after five years, we're just going to plug in 5 for t. So it's going to be 5,000 plus 75 times 5. So 5,000 plus 75 times so the total amount of money in the account is $5,375. Okay. The next one is uh, now we're doing compound interest. So compound interest, the formula is a little different. So A of T, it's the initial amount, which is 5,000 times 5,000 times 1 plus the interest rate, 0 0.015, to the t power. So simplifying this, our formula, our equation is going to be 5,000 times 1.015 to the t power. So if we want to find out after 5 years, we're going to plug in 5 for t. So it's going to be 5,000 times 1.015 to the fifth power. That one is going to be $5,467.22. So it says, which type of account should she open? So in this case, she's depositing money, right? So we want the one that will give us more money after a certain amount of time. Well, the one that will give us more money after a certain amount of time is going to be the compound interest. So she should open... A compound interest account because she has more money after five years. All right, the next question, it says, you buy a new computer for $2,400. The co computer value decreases by 50% annually. We want to know when will the computer have a value of $150. So this problem looks like an exponential decay problem since it's decreasing. And to remind you, for exponential decay, uh, the way that we write it is uh, A, which is the initial amount, times 1 minus the rate to the t power. 
So let's fill in what we know. We know the A value is how much it is worth in the beginning, which is 2,400. We're going to do 1 minus the rate. So 50% as a decimal is 0 0.5. So it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.5 to the T power. So equation to represent the exponential de decay, which I might just write as F of T, uh, is going to be 2,400. 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 to the T power. So we want to figure out when will this have a value of $150. So let's just plug this in. So 2,400 times uh, 0 0.5. So let's just plug in. So after one year, that's at 1,200. So let's just plug in after two years, it's at 600. After three years, it's 300. So we're getting close. So let's just show that plug in. So when we plug in three, it's 2,400 times 0 0.5 to the third power. It's valued at $300. So now let's plug in to the fourth power because it, it's basically cutting in half. So this should be 150. The fourth power is 150. So when we plug in that 2,400 times 0 0.5 to the fourth power, that's $150. So uh, the computer will be worth $150 after four years. All right, so now looking at the last example here, it says Malia bought the following numbers of stickers each day. So she bought one sticker on the first day, six stickers on the second day, 36 on the third day, 216 on the fourth day. So if we were to write this out as a sequence, it would be 1, 6, 36, 216. Uh, how many stickers did she buy on the 10th day? So it looks like this pattern here is multiply by 6. 1 times 6 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. We can just double check that 36 times 6 is 216. So we can actually write a geometric sequence to represent the situation. So g n, the first term is 1. The common ratio is 6 to the n minus 1 power. So to figure out how many stickers she bought on the 10th day, we can plug in 10 for n. So 1 times 6, 10 minus 1 is to the ninth power. So 1 times 6 to the ninth power. That's a lot of stickers. So on the 10th day, she buys uh, 10,077,996 stickers.